She scammed us. She lied, just like Carly Russell. All you Simpson Panthers is out there going at black men, trying to get us to put ourselves out there for a black woman that we ain't related to and we ain't putting that me to. Oh, y'all tripping. That's what y'all sound like to me. Research over me search. Let's get into it. There's still people that believe this story. She has multiple videos up of her having a similar allergic reaction. She has multiple GoFundMe with similar incidents. And her friend, they say she a scammer. There's no police report. The owner of the restaurant said that's not on them. There's no blood after they're being bricked. Come on, guys. We are CSI social media investigators. And we graduated from YouTube University. How y'all going to talk out us on our investigation? Let's go. This appears to be a video made by Rose showing you all her after visit summary, her police report. is showing that she did have an emergency room visit on September the 3rd. It was due to face, a facial injury caused by trauma. You can see the multiple CT scans that she did have. The results show that she has a bone injury. Below her finger shows the possible reasons for the bone injury. This here is her doctor note. So to all of you who are saying that she has saline injections or an allergic reaction, stop the fucking cap. Oh, y'all believe in anything these days? I gotta stop believing these hoes. In the amount of times I've been tagged in this video, y'all didn't find it suspicious when this individual insert themselves? Let's see it. The fact that nobody is questioning the fact that this woman deleted her TikTok, privatized her Instagram, hasn't posted an update on her face on Instagram, but has garnered almost $50,000 in six days, that's a little weird to me. Nobody's questioning her, despite the fact that she did this in 2020, did it a little more subtly in 2022, and now again in 2023. Nobody's questioning it. Not a single soul. So if her Instagram is private, how would you know if she's uploading any new photos or not? And you damn right I followed her back. Uh, Christina, go and take it away. Y'all saw a funky, nasty spirited white woman barely get up out of bed, sleep still in the eye, to make a video discrediting a black woman who said that she was the victim of a brutal, violent attack. Not sharing any reputable sources, right? No credible sources, no proof, no evidence, just theories and vibes. Just theories and vibes, and that's who's shedding light on this entire scenario. That's who you're listening to. Okay, black people are trying to have a conversation about how we, we protect black women and this random white woman inserts herself and that's who you decide to listen to. Instead of the black woman that had the video of the night that it happened and a video of her in the hospital and a video of, of her hospital reports, right? Her medical records. We already know y'all don't like to listen to medical records because Meg Thee Stallion showed medical records, right? And Meg Thee Stallion showed her foot after damage of it getting shot and you still didn't believe her then. I had a video for every single time a man threatened, harassed me or attacked me. I would be able to make a three-part trilogy film series. And you would still call me a liar. You would still call all these other black women liars like you already do. Don't believe black women. And it's getting old, okay? The plot line is running stale. You do everything you can to discredit us, whether we have evidence or not. And you'll listen to people who you know you don't know typically trust, right? Y'all don't typically trust white women because before, before, white women, you know they do. And I'm going to cut you off right there, Christina, because some people do trust white women, actually. But it wasn't just her, though. It wasn't just her. Today on Ghetto News, man, I'm sorry to report, we may have gotten bamboozled, her fluffled, hoodwinked. She didn't just pull the wool over her eyes, she pulled the whole damn sheep on our face. So we all know this lady, right? The brick lady, a.k.a. Ro Reacts. Now, it seems like she has a history of doing this sort of thing. Basically, in 2020, she actually, once again, played the victim to actually get GoFundMe donations. And I want y'all to listen to this. Years we've been scammed again. Rhoda Osman, the brick lady, appears to be a CSI scammer. CSI law and order TikTok investigators, man. Bees. Her first incident was in 2020. She claimed she was assaulted by a dollar store security guard. And man, did the story get crazy. Man, this story got more twists and turns than a Jamaican street. Seems like we got Carly Russell again. She had black women coming for black men all over the internet. But as more details of the story came out, man, her story was flakier than a 90-year-old crotch. Y'all remember her claiming that none of the black men around actually came to her defense? Yeah, that one. Now watch this clip. Yeah, I'm talking about, I got the brick, you know? And uh, who's trying to help her? That's all who's trying to do. You see what I'm saying? Who's trying to help her? I called the police and stuff like that. They pulled up. I talked to them. I know they got the video. So that was bullshit. Now, y'all remember this guy who claimed he was there? Oh, nope. His ex-girlfriend outed him. He doesn't even live in the same state. 
It was just another motherfucker doing it for clicks and views. Oh, so the owner of the establishment also finally spoke out, so he reviewed all the security footage, and there was no video of her getting assaulted in any shape or form. And yet she was able to still raise $40,000 on GoFundMe donations this time around. And now for the obvious question. I'm pretty sure we all see that swelling on her face, right? On top of not filing a police report, it's alleged that she actually got treated for an allergic reaction, guys. Oh, just in case we can't put one-on-one -on -one together, guys, she did this for clout, she did this for views, and she did this for money. The extreme limits that some people are willing to go to just disprove this black woman, and y'all acting like Fox News journalists to try to concoct these stories and narratives is baffling to me. You know, it really speaks volumes of our society. I know that we're doomed as a society because there are people right now trying to use media takeout. Media takeout, a gossip blog, one of the most unreputable sources known to man, a blog that was sued and lost for libel. Do you know how difficult it is to be sued for libel in this country? It is extremely difficult if you didn't know. But this blog, they're using it to discredit Roe, who was hit with a brick a little bit over a week ago. I've seen people say that she had on prosthetics, be serious. I've seen people say that she had uh, an allergic reaction, also be serious. This woman, after being released from the hospital, had to record the incident report because people are saying that there isn't an incident report. And by people, I mean, again, media takeout uh, because they couldn't find it, right? Because they are known for their <laughs> investigative journalism. But people are she had to record this video of her paperwork including her injuries uh in order for people like nobody should have to do that to validate like the harm or abuse that they they've been on the receiving end of um i just want to question how we approach literacy but I, even beyond that beyond that we don't even have to get into that because the reality is before y'all even have these allegations y'all were going above and beyond to discredit this woman y'all have had her mass reported to the point where her account on tiktok was taken down and there needs to be some uh, community accountability around this because the reality is y'all were already vile and nasty before y'all even had these baseless allegations these allegations I'm going live with both Shaheen and Christina later on today. Y'all should pull up. But listen, and this is the part that really annoy me because shit like this happens every day, B. He punched me in the mouth, boy. I'm so confused. Huh? So with this whole situation with this lady being hit in the face with a fucking brick by a grown ass man and people are literally trying to blame her for it and she didn't get no justice. I just want to share this little story time about how a grown ass man punched me in the face outside of a club unprovoked. And when I say unprovoked, I mean unfucking provoked. But she lying though too, right? She lying. In conclusion, let me get a little intersection of what you get. This is the part that don't make sense, right? When we start talking about particular images being shared to kids, we make arguments and say, hey, the gay agenda should not be shown to kids because then kids is going to forget their gender roles to forget who's really a man and who's really a woman. And our society only messed at that because men are supposed to be providers and protectors and women are supposed to be nurturers. That's what y'all say. And then we literally hit with an incident and y'all literally go the other way and say, hey, man, women... And, 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 and got to be protected. You see what I'm saying? And men ain't no providers or protectors. You see what I'm saying? I only got to do that for women I'm putting that meat to or women I'm related to. I don't care nothing about no community. I ain't putting myself in no ways home. None of that. I don't care about no Aquaman. I don't care about no Montgomery bra. Listen, that was an instance that that has happened there. And that ain't for me. Y'all crazy in your head. Y'all think a man that's going to put himself in there, this, that, and the other. It's another man that's doing it. You see what I'm saying? Y'all keep on isolating what's going on as if you feel me? That it's not another man that you're protecting a woman from. You see what I'm saying? Y'all want to isolate it and make it like, hey, women just getting done by women and just like, nah, that's cap. You feel me? Y'all talk a lot about misandry and discrimination towards men, but I don't see y'all having that same energy towards the institutions that are disparate when it comes to messing up men. Capitalism. You see what I'm saying? The military industrial complex. The prison industrial complex. Instead, you want to make it about interpersonal experience that you had with a woman. Listen, man, I get real annoyed when y'all start correlating me with a goddamn Derek Jackson or a Samuel, uh, what's his name? Kevin Samuel Light. Listen, I give analysis about power and domination that concerns institutions, systems, and power. I'm not really... A concern with too many of y'all interpersonal relationships. Y'all want to listen to them old weak ass, broke ass management dudes give y'all some. Y'all do that. They ain't got nothing to do with me though. You see what I'm saying? Education's elevation. Y'all picked the right one. We're going live later on today. I promise we is. Rubies and diamonds are often in jewelry stores. They're in glass cases. They're secure. That video was a part of the ongoing discussion about the woman that was hit in the head with a brick. 
In the video, the creator says that women must be okay with giving up control in order to receive protection. She uses the analogy of diamonds and rubies that are locked away in a glass shelf and protected versus the rocks and dirt that you see on the ground. Here's the problem with that analogy. If we're to take that analogy at face value, rubies and diamonds are inanimate objects that are violently plucked out of the ground and then put behind glass shelves for commercial commodification. So in the analogy, women must become inanimate objects in order to receive protection. These inanimate objects exist for the sole purpose of other people's consumption. This is essentially the objectification of women. Thus, the so-called giving up of control in exchange for protection is not really consensual and it's not really protection. It's simply objectification, which leads back to the core issue at hand, the dehumanization of women, in this case specifically, Black women. It doesn't matter that the diamonds and rubies are behind a glass shelf and perceived as more valuable than dirt and rocks. In both cases, they're inanimate objects. What is perceived in this case as protection is really power and control over women as dehumanized beings, which leads back to the overall issue of violence against women. So instead of telling women that we must participate in our own objectification for the sake of illy perceived protection, we should instead focus on uplifting the humanity and human rights of women. Oh, I got time today. For the past couple of days, we've all seen a lot of women talk about, oh, if I was in a situation and somebody needed help, somebody was being disrespected, I'm going to step in. How can't you step in? I would do it. This is an easy situation to step in. This is an easy situation for a woman to hold another woman accountable. And do you see that being happening? But y'all be so quick on men talking about what a man should do or what a man should do and what he shouldn't do and what qualifies a man to be considered a man. But when it's y'all turn, where y'all at? Y'all gonna type in my comment section that you there, but where are you actually at in these moments? Nowhere? Oh. Number one. What in the false correlation is going on here? Is this man trying to compare verbal disrespect to physical assault? I hope he's not trying to do that. Number two, he literally could have said, hey man, ableism is bad and how dare this woman try to disparage this man. Instead, he going to fold it into a whole narrative about why women should be held accountable and men should be held accountable because women never come to the defense of men. Number three, in this video, you seen that somebody came to his defense. You see what I'm saying? When we're talking about this past couple of days with the woman in the brick, nobody came to the defense. Nobody even said anything to the dude that hit her with the brick. At least buddy friend was like, are you wrong for this? You're going to take a L. Number four, make y'all mind up, man. Anytime we start talking about trans women, y'all want to start talking about the innate strength of biological men. And when a biological man slap a woman, all of a sudden these two things are equal and gender equality. And hey, man, I'm a human and you're a human. And you see what y'all do right here? Number five, the way he ate that orange was so annoying to me. Just like, ugh, why, bro? Number six. Y'all be purposely obtuse and it really blows my mind. So let's think about how this happens in terms of patterns and trends. Do women do wrong to men? Yes. Does this negate the overwhelming trend or pattern of gender violence towards women? No, it don't. Number eight. So simping is when you advocate for women's progress politically, socially, economically, but it's not simping when you want to argue with women about why you shouldn't have to protect them with men, even though you argue that men are so much stronger than women. Y'all arguments really be like, well, if moms abuse sons, then this means that grown men are able to abuse women because, hey, man, they're doing it to us, too. Head ass. 46,000 people agree with man trying to tell a man what he should do and what he shouldn't do. But y'all won't do nothing, though. Cop out. <laughs> the video where no black woman is present and there's actually no black woman present except we're gonna make this short and quick 
do you see how you keep on bringing up race and I never brought up race? I just said women. So you think if I wanted to bring up race, I would bring up race? You think my video was solely attacking black women? Absolutely not. I don't do that. That is what your content is about, bro. It's as simple as that. All I said is women are coming at men for men not being accountable of other men's behavior. This is a video of a woman coming at a man where another woman could have held her accountable for her actions. You care about race. You make everything about race. That's not what I do. You have your audience. I have my audience. If you want to group everything into race, even though, yes, that was a black woman that was hit by a brick, by a brick at the end of the day, I just see it as a woman being hit by a brick. I'm not finna do all that. That's why I stay away from things like that. I'm glad you have your audience. I'm glad you have the people that support you. But listening is still a skill. I'm good. I'm glad you're good with your words. You can use words in the correct way, talking obtuse, abuse, whatever you want to say. But at the end of the day, the only thing that came out of my mouth was women holding other women accountable. You threw in the color. You threw in race. All you had to do was listen to someone say, hey, this is a video where a man is asking women to hold other women accountable, just like other women want men to hold men accountable. I ain't about to do all that race talk. I'm not about to do all that race talk because I just want to talk about gender. Because I don't have the range to talk about racism. And I'm going to be purposely misleading and deceiving because I don't understand the word obtuse. And I'm going to say that I just want to talk about gender in the abstract and I don't want to talk about the race thing. Well, let's do it then. What systems of power or institution do you think that women should hold women accountable for? You see what I'm saying? When we start talking about gender violence and we start talking about systems of institution and domination, hopefully those words ain't too big for you. You're able to really hold on to how you try to say, well, if men are being held accountable, you know what I'm saying? Or women are saying men should be held accountable for the way in which they're able to benefit with privilege and power and domination from these systems, institutions, and these practices and these beliefs. We think something should happen. What is an example, you see what I'm saying? Or an instance of something that we should be holding women across. I mean, holding women accountable for. I hope your example isn't this isolated incident, you feel me, of this uh, woman berating this man, you feel me, that's in this uh, wheelchair, you know? And I also want to point out that there are other men that are there that's not saying anything, that they're laughing, you know? Hopefully none of these words too big for you. Now, let's deal with this race part again. Now, the discourse is about the centering of a black woman, and you decided to be colorblind and say, I only care about gender and I don't get into race. Wow, you don't want to make some of your white friends mad or something like that? See, I love individuals like you that love to use those dog whistles. See, you deploy your politics of niceness. Try to talk all nice and sweet and slow. And I'm going to criticize this man for saying the words that he's using. And, and, and if I want to say race, I would have said race. My criticism was that you were being colorblind and you still are doubling down being colorblind. But let's just stick on gender again. What are the examples or instances that you want women to be held accountable for? What are you equating to systems of male domination in terms of women being held responsible or accountable? And hopefully none of those words too big. I know how when I use a word that got more than two syllables in it, you, you know what I'm saying? You turn into Ken from Barbie. All you can do is park. All you can do is beach. Come on, talk to me now. Use some of those great words of diction that you just had with me right there. You feel me? I'm letting you know. If, you, if I decided to give you the time, I would break you in a debate. It's literally the fact of how I knew you motherfuckers was going to sit here and try to justify this shit. Y'all damn near use half of y'all work day to try to investigate some shit just for it to not even be true. Let's get into it. So as we all know, earlier today, people have been talking about the situation with the woman in Houston who got hit in the face with a brick. And of course, to no surprise, men specifically black men have to have an explanation on why a woman was abused because they just don't simply believe a man will just abuse a woman just abuse a woman so they had to go look for a reason they couldn't find anything but they had to go look for something they try to use this video and try to use this video to sit there and say that her getting hit in the face with a brick was justified because she hit a man in public and posted it as if it was funny now 
Now, I'm not sure if whoever went to go look for that video actually did research or actually paid attention to what they were reposting as if we can't just go on the girl's main page and go look at it ourselves. But you forgot something. You forgot that she mentioned that it was a skit. Literally, the videos y'all are seeing are two different videos. Think I'm lying? Give me one second. This is her in the first video that went viral. This is her in the second video. What's the difference, you may ask? Literally the fucking location and her clothing. Her hair is down in this one and she has a ponytail up in this one. She has a watch on in this one and she doesn't have one on in this one. She has a purse on in this one and she doesn't have a purse on in that one. These are obviously two different damn videos posted on two different damn days. Oh, what about the video when she slept the white man, you ask? That was also a skit. Not only was it a skit, but she literally admitted to it being a skit in the captions but you motherfuckers are so slow y'all motherfuckers are so slow y'all ain't even think to look at that first this is activism and consensual and i do not promote actual violence if y'all was gonna sit there and try to ruin a girl's life the least y'all could have did was a little bit more research y'all could have looked a little bit more harder but once again y'all would rather go so hard to prove a black woman wrong or y'all would work so hard to go against black women that y'all literally have to make up lies in order to prove a point. That's crazy. But y'all spread the word because this needs to get out there. It's too much misinformation about this woman. People are threatening her life. People are saying that she deserved more than what she got. Share this video. Let everybody know that the video that they are sitting there exposing isn't even anything to expose because it's not real. So, yeah. Before I even get into this, let's state the obvious. Dudes fight over sports teams, rappers we've never met, fictional characters accidentally stepping on sneakers, lines to buy overpriced white-owned clothes, etc. So it's perfectly reasonable to wonder why a dude wouldn't fight a dude who hit a woman with a brick. Sadly, this triggers me in thinking about the Say Her Name hashtag and why it was created. The Say Her Name hashtag was created to highlight the lack of mobility when it comes to black women that are brutalized in our community and how we are usually quicker to mobilize around the fear, tears, and brutality to black men's bodies. This is one of the videos right here that's been circulating on Twitter that's tried to justify this woman being this woman being hit with a brick because she stagely slapped this man in an obviously video that this person right here consensually took part of. For debate's sake, let's say this video was not staged and she actually did this to this man. Do y'all believe that would justify her getting hit in the brick with potential blood force trauma that would literally almost take her life away? Does that justify it? This reminds me of a video that I posted two years ago that pissed y'all off. Let's play the video. See, this is how I feel about this. In a lot of communities, in a lot of homes, in a lot of preachers, a lot of churches, a lot of ministers, you teach your sons to not be gay. You teach your sons to not live a homosexual lifestyle, but you're missing the biggest teaching that you need to be teaching a lot of your sons. It's how to accept rejection from women. It's no reason why so many women are getting murdered, getting beat upside their head, getting robbed, getting hopped on, getting pushed off a cliff, people running in female cars, people running in female homes because niggas can't accept rejection. Because a lot of these small dick niggas out here who really don't have anything going on, who really wasn't taught how to be a man, who really wasn't taught how to hold a job, who really wasn't taught how to carry himself, who really wasn't taught how to treat a woman, who really wasn't taught how to respect a woman, but he was just taught on how to fuck women, and that is good enough to be a man as long as you're not gay, that was not taught to deal with rejection. If a woman tell your ass no, it's motherfucking no, maybe you ain't man enough for her. And I understand a lot of your sons out here, they are big rejects, but you need to start teaching your sons how to be real men. You need to start teaching your sons how to accept if a woman say no, it's no. You need to start teaching your sons how to accept if a woman don't want to give him her number, it's no. But you're teaching your sons how to be gay. That's the biggest lesson in life that you're teaching your sons. But let me tell you something, baby. We not out here knocking these women upside their heads and stealing their pocketbooks and stealing their jewelry and whipping them and killing them and beating on them. It's your straight son. Because what you did was... I find it preposterous that the storyline is being created for her being a troublemaker and that's for nobody should come to her defense when actuality in the hood, hey man, I don't give a damn what they did right around Trent Frost. That's my homie. I'm riding with him. We'll talk about it in the car. That's usually the politics, but we see that there is a little bit of uh, exceptions when it comes to black women or not. Consciously only worried about distractions. Y'all be more caught up on symbolic acts 
than the material ones. You more caught up on somebody talking about the booty hole being brown and sensational acts of consent than you is about people really getting hit with bricks and talking about spinning the block. Make it make sense. And less than a month ago, we were sensationalizing a chair in the name of black unity and camaraderie. Straight black men today, we can't intervene getting assaulted because we might get killed or hurt. Cool people and women. So y'all agree that straight men are scary and violent now. And that's why a lot of us don't want y'all to be around. Let's really engage the pathological lens this is happening through. We always have this narrative that says that any time that we see white people doing black people bad, we jump to fence and we do everything about it. There's also a narrative that says that when black people do black people wrong, we don't do anything about it. Now we are arguing about a black woman being hit with a brick and how the inaction of other men is rational. That's not pathological to y'all. Black men pulling stuff of a black woman's social media they claim to show that she didn't deserve protection when a black man smashed her face with a brick for not giving her a number seem like the same thing white supremacists do after cops murder black people and claim they deserve to die. And to be clear, in the area that she got hit at, that's exactly that what could happen to her. I've seen the videos of the alleged bystanders that was there that didn't do nothing. This dude right here shared it. Witness from Brick Incident speaks and says she's a troublemaker, but think about it like this, man. The same individuals that's willing to bang all the music or ride with your homie right, wrong, true or false and saying sexy red doing all this symbolic stuff is bad is the same people that'll say, hey, man, she's a troublemaker. Let that bitch get here with a breed. Shout out to Duke on TikTok. He been getting people together for about two days now. Consciously, do you see the whole story? You didn't see the mother videos, did you? Man, listen. This is what the subtitle said this video right here. This is the same woman that was going around smacking white people in the streets. The over sensationalizing, the intellectual dishonesty of it all. This is what they referencing right here. I still can't be like, what? Man, to the people in the back, all the folks that said my comment section talking about simping and being zesty and being sassy and pandering when it comes to women's issues. Them boys is the same one being real loud and proud about, hey, man, we ain't, that woman is a troublemaker. She brought it on to herself. You play stupid games, you get stupid prizes. What does you being against pandering and being sassy and being, what does it get you? Justifying gender violence? Oh, man, Conscious Lee always talking about that gay stuff. He don't never talk about nothing to go with the black community. So what about us? I ain't hearing y'all talk about this black woman, how she should have been protected, how somebody should have asked at least, sister, are you okay? Did nobody get this man's license plate? Did nobody say anything to the man? He popped a woman and then left? Conclusion, man, forgetting arguing with these people, what are we going to do about finding an individual to hit this woman with the brick? You see what I'm saying? How can this man see the justice that he's supposed to see? You feel what I mean? Like, what, what are we doing about that? Because arguing with these dudes is like arguing with a brick wall. See what I'm saying? They don't, they, it ain't, it's, 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 it's inconsequential.